Can we lift up our hands and just worship the Lord? Let's give him glory. Only he can do what no man can do. When I think of the goodness of Jesus, of heaven everything the cross everything Christ was made to suffer for for your sake let your body connect to it this, this is the first meeting after the resurrection service tell him to unlock it and it's supposed to be in a month of healing the month of ear can you ask God Unlock my life to everything that Christ suffered for. Every strife he took, every pain. Let his cry open the gates. Unlock my gates. Let the symbol of the blood, I connect with the power in the blood. Let me receive a sign as a result of his resurrection. I want my own sign. Can you tell him, Heavenly Father, you went around showing yourself to everybody after you resurrected and many bore witness of the risen Christ. Today, show yourself to me. Show yourself to me also, like you did to others after you resurrected. I ask for a special sign. I, Emmanuel Kure, 
I ask for a special sign. Show yourself to me in the name of Jesus Christ. My very soul shall shout Christians, Christ in us, the hope of glory. That is the only thing that makes us Christians. No other thing. Christ, remove Christ, there is no Christianity. Can you tell him, connect me to what makes me a Christian. Connect me today to that life that was sacrificed. Activate yourself in me. Unlock me to your life. Just pray as you are there. Contending for your position. Unlock me to that life that makes me a Christian. Father, you showed yourself by many signs. Unlock me and show me your sign. Unlock me. You just touch and anoint your own head. My very soul. Shah to me. 
I don't care what you came here with or what you came here for. Even if you came for ordinary fellowship. Let this oil unlock you. We are entering into a very serious season. These next two months are going to be very powerful months. Unlock me to all the mysteries of who you are. The mystery of who you are. Unlock me to what you are. Just tell God to unlock you. That is just a prayer. To who he is. What he is. Where he is. Unlock me to where you are. Unlock me to your power. Your might. Your strength. Your grace. Unlock me, O God. To the fullness of your existence. Unlock me. And you can touch your feet with it if you want. Unlock my feet. Just unlock me. You don't need new oil with the same leg. Unlock. Just unlock me. Let there be no limitation. These two months, let my life be measured by your Holy Spirit. By your power, by your might, by your divine ability, abilities. Let my life be measured. My very soul shouts, the worst Passover they have had. They literally threw out the Passover we were fighting over Mount Moriah at the Al-Aqsa Mocks. Every day throughout. They ate the cedar, what they call the cedar, that the, 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 the meat, the, 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 the lamb that was meant to be eaten in a hurry at midnight. They ate it in the cellars of their houses because rockets were flying. It was not the best of times. If you want, since 1969 war, it's the worst they have had. Did you hear what I just said? Portals are opening. Demonstrations were there on the streets throughout in the night, all over, against even the government. Enemy from outside, enemy from within. And it was supposed to be the resurrection day, the resurrection season. How can we enter into a resurrection like it was in the day of Egypt, when they're about to get out of Egypt? They went back to the same warfare. They were not sure whether tomorrow Pharaoh was going to set them free. It was like boju boju. 
Why, what is so peculiar about this resurrection, this Easter? And many Christians didn't realize it. In fact, it was a footnote for many people. But what touched me most was Sudan catching fire in the last few days. Ah! Sudan fighting themselves. Military versus military. It's not a civilian war. The civilians are not involved. It's soldiers. Fighting soldiers. Sudan from ancient times has been an exporter of jihad. Yet it had never been hurt. It had never turned itself against itself. When Egypt turns against Egypt, the Messiah is about to walk out triumphant. The Messiah is about to do or say something. Say something. Every instrument that has afflicted our Messiah in this season, this year, they will answer that. that I'm telling you prophecy. There are things that worry me that I wish there was a generation that would understand it. But then in the last days, very few people will be waiting for them. So I won't be surprised if very few people seek to understand or care about what I'm talking about. But I care because that is who I am. That is what I was called for. Listen. Listen. Don't forget all the powers of the jihads all over Africa came from Sudan. Bin Laden trained thousands of his students in Sudan. In fact, I'm talking to you now, more than 1,200 plus, if not 300 students, Islamic students, are schooling in Sudan now, Nigerians. I'm talking about Nigerians. They are already begging for the government to come and take them out. This thing, Listen, portals are opening. There is something you are going to hear in a moment that will let you know that no matter what you see, good or evil, the Messiah is behind it. You may not like it. I'm sorry, these days, I will beg your permission to be controversial. You won't be the ones who sing the song you want to hear. You are free. Thank God we already built this place. We will continue here so that the rapture church can find their way someday and know there is still a place where the Messiah is still being preached and the focus and context of the Messiah is kept so that we can look up to, the, to Jesus the beginner and the finisher of our faith the finisher Listen, portals are being opened. Strange spirit, you're going to hear something. I'm going to sit down for a moment and I will only come back to conclude with the Jephthah prayer, the mystery for the next two weeks. So I'm going to take my seat and enjoy God talk to us again. He did what I just said. I mean, I'm going to take my seat, enjoy hearing myself too. And the Holy Spirit. Now, this recording you will hear was not preached somewhere. So I'm not bringing a message I preach in Ecuador or I preach in Joss. It was preached for this meeting. But the day it came, there was an urgency. If I kept it for today, till today, it will have disappeared. Now, you won't understand that. I got caught up in that urgency that I ordered the recording and I said I too will join the congregation and enjoy myself. But at the end, I will close the matter because we will break bread at the end of the matter. Did you hear what I just said? Did you hear what I just said? But why is Sudan? Do you know how much blood said that they said by that place called Sudan? Do you know how much slavery the Southern Sudanese have suffered in the hands of these men Sudanese?
Do you know how much of Africa has secretly given up their destinies? Their hopes wiped out. And the secrets of that came from Sudan. Now, let me drop another bomb shell. Historians will fight me for this. But do you know part of the secret of Egypt is Sudan? The power behind Egypt, its mystery. Those black, tall people that look like Madinga tribes. Don't you know that mystery is connected to Sudan? That means part of the ancient mysteries of Egypt, including their gods, were connected to Sudan. They have a lineage. The Sudanese and the Egyptians. If I yesterday in the news or the voice today, I had the Egyptians complaining about something that is affecting them. I think part of their army are there. And yet their armies are caught up in this fight. What is Egyptian army doing in Sudan? I've never known that they were there. Nobody mentions them. My friends, God is unlocking deeps. And because we, many people want to be spiritually correct, contextually correct. I'm sorry, you, until this mouth is shut up, bata, bata. I want to be the oracle. Who says this at his ease? So at tomorrow, when everybody starts turning around, you will remember somebody said it. And somebody will shout it. I have heard this before. Now, I want you to link your hands together. That's why we are still standing. I will have asked you to sit down. Just link up your hands together. My very soul, doctor. If you like, lift up your hands there. If you like, don't. Hallelujah. Make sure you are touching somebody. Praise God for saving me. Can you tell the Lord by this spirit of agreement, form a ring of fire around me and my house for the months to come. We are just asking to connect us and bond us to his resurrection. A second prayer item. Form a ring of fire for this next two months. For me and my house. To protect us for the times to come. Secure your covenant. Defend your covenant. By your covenant, sustain my life. By covenant, you kept them in the wilderness. In this moment, they have entered the wilderness again. By covenant, secure me and my house. Through the shedding of the blood of Jesus, cover me. Cover my going out from today. I sow myself into you. Cover my going out. Ah, if you knew what bloodshed Sudan had exported, and they by their own hand, not that I rejoice, I don't, but I see ancient spirits taking their own vengeance. And I see, you see, what you sow is what you reap. There is hidden blood, even the ones we don't know in that land. Can we tell God? That as his judgments begin to unlock the earth, let there be mercy. And let him even ask for mercy for Sudan. There is no nation where there is no sin. The same way we have pleaded for mercy for Egypt, and God showed Egypt mercy. Let's ask for mercy from Sudan for Sudan. But let the altars of Baal be destroyed. Today we will, at the end of this meeting, pray against those altars. Every altar, ancient altar, that has shifted the history of the earth from Sudan, in these bombs that are flying, let those altars be destroyed. By their own hand, let them destroy the covenant by which they afflicted other nations. 
we are a watchman group. We must pray deep things, otherwise we are not a watchman group. I repeat, by their own hand, let the foundations of every strange altar be destroyed. Can you ask the Lord to save you from every affliction? Tell God by agreement here. I may not be powerful enough, but in agreement with my brethren, save me from every affliction. Save me from the afflictions to come. Set your spirit to secure us. My very soul shall shout hallelujah praise God for saving my very soul Shout hallelujah. Praise God for saving me. Can you tell the Lord lastly that by this prayer I shake off the hand of the serpent from my house? Can you begin to shake out of your house every hand of serpent? Every interference of the serpent, whether it is subtle or obvious. Let these moans reveal them and cut them off. We are going to pray this prayer again. When we address Asherat. Tell God, whatever gates open in Nigeria in these two months, it will not affect me and my house. The gates that are affecting the world. Can we ask God to shake out the hand of the serpent from Israel, from Jerusalem, It's not a coincidence that the gates are being opened and the people are being freed now to go and execute the covenants of these 30 days. Can you tell God to shake out the serpent? Every hole of the serpent on Nigeria, shake it out. During this last month, Every handwriting of ordinance of the servant. Father, by your oil on my head, through the altar of my life, I invoke your spirit to walk through Nigeria and cancel the ordinances of the serpent. Every hold, every hidden wickedness, cut it off. Praise God for saving me. So shall shout hallelujah. Praise God for saving me. You will forgive me, I'm still talking like a priest. And I'm not afraid to talk. I do foolish things. Forgive my foolishness. It is in those foolishness that my secrets are, my strength is, and my invisibility. So allow me be who I am. Just be who you are, like I normally say. Have you not noticed that in these same 30 days, all those who were making noise for freedom were attacked? 
everybody who was including obi obi was stung by the serpent twice this month alone first of all he got arrested in london stung by the serpent did you hear what i just said why to shut up his mouth he was making too much embarrassing noise the noise he was making was going to sow a seed beyond the seed and the serpent went after him have you not noticed that they attacked him there and here they came to ask him to run away he should leave the country how did he hear any of you talk you know the other time who shouted so loud you don't know the ways of the spirit everybody who has made noise now the court cases have gone quiet they are walking home but nobody is hearing not even the social media because there seems to be something that has entered into the waters anybody who will speak in this city is caught up is afflicted sickness disease pain suffering trouble they cannot explain what is keeping them this last 30 days just 30 days and i sat down like a sick man watching cinema you know that very few people understand the ways of the serpent on the rock when they want to shut them up that's why i said beware of these two months because today everyone that has been strung down we set them free in jesus name everyone that should be a witness for the liberty of nigeria we release their voices in jesus name no it doesn't stop god's will from being done no. but nobody must be shut down i'm happy he announced he's not leaving this country he, he, he was born here he's ready he will die he's not going anywhere he has his wealth outside though. But he's not going to live outside. He's going to stay here. I told you that he was a symbol. Every word I've spoken has been as I hear it. You know, God has no straight story about any character. God's testimony of him is not straight. Huh? He gets his own loophole inside small thing inside there is no story of god about any of us here that is straight this is mercy that has kept us so when god follows you ah, when he started writing on the ground concerning that woman that was to be stoned it was because her life was not straight and the lives of all those who wanted to stone her were also not to counsel is the same thing but because he knew the part of every one of them, including the woman, only he knew what he wrote to set that woman free. Can you raise your two hands and say, Father, open the heavens. Begin to write on the soil of Nigeria, the liberty of Nigeria. Let the hand of the serpent be cut off. Let the hand of the serpent be cut off. Let Nigeria be connected to her destiny. The hand of the serpent be cut off. The sand of the serpent be cut off. Let the sun begin to speak. Let the courts begin to speak. Let the waters begin to speak. Let the four winds begin to speak. Their stories and their roles in the name of Jesus. Write my release. You know the path for me. Unlock my gates. I receive a sign. 
I receive a blessing. Show yourself to me. Mighty hand. Show yourself to me. These two months. In Jesus name. Can somebody say amen? I very soon shall. just think something is just happening upstairs because we seem to be understanding things we shouldn't be hearing or understanding and yet even sometimes we want to disbelieve ourselves but the, the evidence is there before they happen we are told when they happen how do we deny it I will come up again in a moment and we will break this portal complete today I'm not saying physical pot. Uh, we will break this pot. When it is almost time for the communion, you just go out there and bring out the blood and serve it to everybody. The resurrection. It's the first meeting after the resurrection. And this is how the Lord will have us carry it. Many of us were expecting it differently. Don't worry. The Lord is on the throne. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Raise up your two hands and say, Lord, let these hands become hands of healing. Transform healing into my body. Transform your spirit into my body. Let me become a healer in this month of healing. Let me blossom. In this month of blossoming, of prosperity, of plenty, I receive the mercy of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, listen, I'm not going to control some part of this meeting. And the reason is this. Everybody will voluntarily do what he's led to do. When the Lord calls us, for those who want to reconcile themselves and repair. I'm not going to take the mic. I'm going to sit there. Those of you who are led to go out and kneel down there and reconcile yourselves with the Lord. Do that by yourself. Barwana. I'm only going to take the mic to conclude the last round of prayer. That comes with the communion. The communion will have been served. And so I will just take the mic and release us now. So that it doesn't matter what hole that opens. It won't swallow you in the coming months. But it doesn't matter what hole that opens. You will prosper in the coming months. These are the two laws I will be going. Pits, portals will open. One will set some people down. The other will set some people up. Eh? The one that comes after you will set you up. Can you wave and say amen? Can you say by the hand of the oil of the Lord on my head? I am set up in the coming months. Whatever comes in the coming month will set me up. I receive the blessing of this finger of God in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated as you carry your Bibles and let's just enjoy the Lord. And oh, no. Baba, you are the Lord. Let your name be glorified. I have seen the Lord's goodness. His mercy 
and compassion. I have seen the Lord's goodness. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. O oh Lord, you have been so good, Baba. <coughs> so good to me. O oh Lord, you are excellent, Baba, in my life every day. O oh Lord, you have been so good. You are so good to us. O oh Lord, you are excellent. Shika Rabu Sukuntu Panta Rekinti Man de leka laku rabusta kanta. There is somebody interestingly present here in the congregation today whose destiny had been cut off. And it's like you are going through your last round of life. I don't know what brought you here tonight, but your pursuers have been cut off, and that yoke upon your neck is broken. It was like you were going through your last hope, your last round. I don't know how to explain it, but somebody is here. This was supposed to be your last round, and today God has just cast a net over you, a covering over you, and succored you from your pursuers. I hear the Lord saying, in the coming month, your life will be rescued. In the coming month, your destiny will be turned around. Receive your miracle where you are, in the name of Jesus Christ. Can we just begin to bless God for the last month? Today is a new month. Today is a month of year. Today is also a peculiar day, especially for the global watchmen. Because God is setting thrones all over the world as men begin to sharpen their arrows and prepare their instruments of war as watchmen begin to rededicate themselves and renew their covenants, as people begin to prepare themselves, an army is being born, a new army that is withdrawing from the noise around to prepare itself. Today, I release the hand of God to help you with the new garments that is clothing you with. And I release the power of God to go before you and rebuke the devourer in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, open the gates of heaven in this month of year and let's see the glory that we have never seen before. Let your majesty, let your spirit manifest as never before. I receive the grace of God for today. I receive the grace of God for everybody in the name of Jesus Christ. Wherever you are, raise your two hands to the Lord. In the name of Jesus, whether you are watching us on television or you are watching us or you are with us in the physical, raise your hands where you are because I see a new spirit of power, authority resting upon your life. I see healing coming upon those hands. Can you shake it before the Lord like this? Just shake it before the Lord. Twist it before the Lord, you know, like this. Receive a new anointing and a new grace for signs and wonders because we are entering into the month of healing. Anything you touch shall be healed. The month here is the month when the Lord, because you have kept his commandment, because you have risen to prepare yourself for the battle that is ahead, God is clothing you with the oil, with the power, with the anointing to heal things to change things, 
to bring about a new beginning, to change circumstances around you. I release that empowerment upon your life right now in the name of Jesus. It's the moon for turning around. The moon for turning around. God is going to turn around so many things in this coming month. It's a month that carries the covenant and the oath of the Lord. The month for turning around. Maro sekenta, rabashenta, ribo sekento, makante ribo shenta. Mama Rakunta, I can sense everything turning around, turning around, turning around, turning around for your good, for my good, for your good. Things turning around. Receive the miracle of your turning around. You're turning around. That's what I feel in the spirit this hour. There is a turning around coming in the month of year. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You are worthy to be praised and adored. So we lift up holy hands in one accord, singing, Blessed be your name. Oh Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You are holy, holy. You are holy. Baba King of Kings, Lord of Lords, you are holy. Yeah, holy. Baba, you are holy. King of kings, Lord of lords, I worship you. There is a stream falling from the heavens. It's like a dew. And it's dropping upon men. And it's declaring new beginnings. It's de de declaring a fresh start. It's just, I see dropping upon nations. People have been given new positions or been placed for new positions. There is a shifting going on, an adjustment. I can sense it in the spirit. Father, we give you glory. Lord, we give you praise. We give you adoration. We thank you. You are the Lord. Again, let your name be glorified. You are the Lord, Baba. Let your name be glorified. I give you glory, O oh Lord, and honor. You are the Lord. Let your name be glorified. I command you to lay hold on your miracle. Can you proclaim with your own mouth? I lay hold on my miracle. I lay hold. I can see spirits being attracted to you, angels, who are bringing miracles. Can you also stretch out that hand towards them and say, I lay hold on my miracle. I take my miracle. I receive my miracle. I receive my miracle. I receive my miracle. I receive my miracle. The whole winds and atmospheres are full of angels this month. I don't know what is going to happen in the world in this month and particularly the month of June. There is something about the month of June that God is already filling the earth starting from this month with angels, angels to protect what? To oversee what? To defend what? I don't know, but today receive your visitation. Receive the presence of the Holy Spirit. Receive the magnification of God around you. Receive the fullness of the Godhead. Receive in the name of Jesus, receive. Thank you, Holy Father. Somebody speak in tongues for one second. Open your mouth loud and begin to rabosh takah lekende riba. 
Just worship the Lord in the spirit or worship the Lord with your understanding or just sing a new song to the Lord. But worship the Lord, worship the Lord, worship the Lord, worship the Lord, worship. We give you glory, we give you praise. We give you praise, we give you praise. Thank you, Father. Just bless God for the miracles. Just bless God for the signs and wonders that I can feel that in feeling. Signs and wonders that will follow you this month, that is following you right now, right away. The change, the change of garments. Just bless the Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome to the moon of ear. We want to thank God for his mercy. Let me say something. I may not be physically present with you in the room, but I see the ordinances of God being rewritten all over the world. I see the hand. I saw like a hand come down from heaven and he began to write in the heavens and on the earth. He began to write over nations. And as he wrote or scripted, the nations began to act. There is a mystery of God that is beginning to manifest. Have you not noticed? And let me say this very, very clearly. Israel has never had it so tough. This is the toughest Passover they have celebrated. I think since independence or since the Six Day War, when they were taken by surprise. Listen, because this is very important. Israel has never had it this hot within and outside. Yet I see the Lord opening the Red Sea and I see a month of healing coming to them. I see a season of healing coming upon Israel. But I see that season, it's like a harvest of the Lord coming upon the nations of the earth and coming particularly upon the church. I hope you heeded my call in my last broadcast during the global watchman's broadcast when the Lord began to tell the watchmen to begin to sharpen their sword and to begin to prepare themselves and begin to revise their scriptures, arm themselves, arm themselves for the season, to put on the whole garment, the garments of war, to get ready to go into warfare. I hope you have begun that preparation. If you have not, you better go and start beginning, I mean, and begin to throw away all kinds of lasciviousness, all kind of lightness of heart, and begin to consecrate yourself for what God is about to do. Because this year, you are taking hold on authority. I see God putting grace in your hands, handing over authority over the nations in your hands, putting them there. I want to welcome every one of us again to the season of wonderful healings and miracles. This month was the month after Israel had just entered the land full of milk and honey, Canaan. And the angel had reported for duty to take them to war. This was the month when they began to divide the land among themselves. And God began to distribute inheritance. Each tribe by name received an inheritance. Today, in the name of Jesus Christ, let your portion begin to stand out from that of others. Let your inheritance begin to separate. By name, let your identity begin to change. Because the season when angels are taking over, the spirit realm, both demons and angels are clamoring and separations are being carried out. Identities 
are being given to people. Clear identities. Those who are demons are coming out clearly to look like demons. And those who are angels are coming out clearly to look like angels. Today, let the separation of identity take place in your father's house. Your lot shall not be with the wicked. Your lot shall not be with the righteous. Your lot today receive that visitation, that help. Can you stretch your hands out there unto me and say, I receive, I receive, I receive in the name of Jesus Christ. I receive the separation of my identity, my identity from that of other people. They have not been easy days. And you will notice that the same way they've not been too easy. They've not been too easy for the righteous. But in the midst of that uneasiness has come an open door, a succor for the righteous, a rest for the righteous, an opening for the righteous, a calmness, a peace that the righteous had never known before, especially those who fear God. And like I said in my last broadcast, an army is being born. An army is being born. Ear, that mode called ear, has to do with blossoming. It's the moment when God begins to blossom, open up gates and bless. Today, let your flower begin to bud. Every seed you have sown, let it receive life. The month of blossoming, just as it is the month of healing, it is the month of light. Light, light, light. Of course, one of the meanings of ear is light, light. And of course, part of the Hebrew meaning is to blossom. Today, Something is going to bud in your life. I mean, it's going to break open. It's, it's just going to light up. It's the moment of splendor. When you begin to receive sweetness. Sweetness. Like I said, it was the moment when they distributed inheritance. Each tribe received where they were supposed to inherit. And then they formed armies to conquer those places. I repeat. They formed armies. Some tribes bonded with each other to go to the east to conquer in the east. Some bonded to go to the north to conquer in the north. I release you on your path to conquest. Every step you take from now will take new territories for you. Because it's the moment of that kind of covenant. When the machinery of God begins to move, the chariots from heaven begin to invade lands and conquer them and separate portions. Ah, Father, we welcome the portion of Nigeria and the chariots of heaven into Nigeria, the chariots of heaven into the nations of Africa, the chariots of heaven into Europe. Everything that needs to be separated, I release the arrows of God to separate those things now. And the pakonto ye hanta, the mind, the heart, the hand of God to smite the waters of each continent to separate from the seas the things that deserve to be separated. I rebuke the dragon spirit that had blocked the roads and blocked all the places. Hey, let there be roar from heaven. Let there be smiting all over the earth. A smiting. This May and June is the month when God smite the waters. When there are riots, there are crimes, there are all kinds of demonstrations of spirit and power. May and June, months when there are demonstrations of spirit and power in the nations of the earth. The smiting of the waters, the healing of the waters, the breaking of the waters, the breaking of yokes, the, the body, God casting body on things that had no body so that he might dismantle their hold and their governance. Rabo Center, I release this cry of the spirit. I release this sound that I hear. I release this rushing of a battle, but the rushing of a mighty battle. 
ye of the wings of the Holy Spirit. I release a sword of fire in your hands. Is a moment when we becomes flames of fire. When the word comes alive in your mouth and you become a flame of fire. I told you the last month, start a consecration. Start a consecration. Let there be reality. A reality that is different from your former reality. I usher you into that reality. I sense a bad pang of the spirit. It's like they are the two months of birthing. God birthing a new thing in the earth. Breaking, clamor, fighting, separation. I don't know. Distribution, breaking and taking inheritance. You know, something prophetic happened in this last month that we finished. The Jews suddenly decided to, in their thousands, march towards a territory they were claiming to build a new settlement for the future. In spite of all the bombs that were flying, you know, the, the rockets, they went in their hundreds of, in their thousands, and they marched, led by cabinet ministers. You know, they went to that place and they sang a new song to Jehovah. I mean, it was a prophet. They have not possessed the place yet, mind you, but they marched there to possess it. I release you to your new place to possess because it's, that is the kind of season. They were only proclaiming what is about to happen in a few months' time ahead. The months of May, the, the months of May and June, the, year, the months of, the, of year and Tammuz, those months are going to be very turbulent, changing months. When the Lord breaks grounds, opens places by force, I won't be surprised if there is some form of serious bloodshed in some places and some kind of sound of war, shouts of war, or battle, clamor for grounds and territories. Because the Lord will be doing a new thing as never before. The Lord will be doing a new thing as never before. And my prayer for you today is that you will find yourself in a new place by the end of June. I repeat, in a new glamorous place by the month of June. You will find yourself in a new glamorous place. My prayer for you is the Lord will open a new gate. My prayer for you is the Lord will bring new changes. My prayer for you is the Lord will raise a loud sound that has never been heard, a shout in your vineyard, in your vineyard that changes and displaces, changes and displaces things around your life. In the name of Jesus, receive your miracle. In the name of Jesus, receive your miracle. In the name of Jesus, receive your miracle. So we're entering into a very meticulous season that has been planned from the heavens from the beginning. Of course, we all know that the month of Ea is connected to Asha, the month of blessing. The month of blessing. Asha means blessed. The month when there is a divine hand that visits you. That is what it is all about. I declare your hands blessed. I declare your life blessed. I declare your dwellings blessed. I declare your waters blessed. Your food blessed. I declare your ground blessed. It's the moment when God is ushering you into a deep. It's a deep moment. For some of you, it will come with battle. That's why God said you should sharpen your sword. But some of you, it will not come with battle. It will just be an announcement of glory. But it's going to be a deep moment where you will find yourself going through a tunnel to come out glorious. To come out victorious. Or going through a harvest. To come out glorious. It's going to be a deep month, very deep month, very serious month. I want us to get ready for it. I said some things during that last broadcast. I want to revisit again. And then we pray our final prayer. I want us to open to Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. 
I want us to see something. I told us that portals are not only opening and that Asian demons are beginning to mix. I sense that in that crowd in Israel, that crowd, I mean, I watched them on television again today and I saw them this morning. That crowd, that crowd, that crowd in Tel Aviv, I sense they were not just ordinary men there. There were spirits mixed with men. I don't know why I have that feeling. The same thing for the attacks on the Holy Mount. All the reactions, the skirmishes on Mount Moriah. You know, at the Al-Assad mocks. Right there. Amongst those domes, I could sense that the exchange between the police and the Arabs were not ordinary. They were spiritual. They have spiritual significance. And like I said in the last meeting, why was it happening during the Passover? It's the hottest Passover. It's the, it's, I will call it that. It's the most rancorous Passover, the most intense Passover, the most tension-filled Passover, when people break bread, afraid, like in the days of the crossover, when there was wailing in some houses that night, serious wailing, and others were anxiously eating the cedar. They were eating in preparation to move out of Egypt, not knowing to what tomorrow will bring, whether Pharaoh will wake up and say, you are not traveling again. The journey is canceled. Or Pharaoh was truly going to let them go. But their faith was only in the God of the Seder, the God of the sacrifice, the God of that lamb, the God of that lamb that they were eating. Their faith was only on that God. That night was a tense night. The same night, Jesus cried, Abba, Father. Abba, Father. Abba, Father. Eli, Eli, Eli. Lama sabatani. That same night when the earth shook, the heavens shook, the curtains were split. That moment of intensity. It's like Israel went through those pangs again. Just a few weeks back. It's like Israel went through those pangs again. There was something that break loose in that week. Something that is still breaking. It's not complete. Something that is about to manifest. Something that is being bettered. A new Israel is about to be born. A new world is about to be defined. And I saw things that worried my spirit. But that on that holy mount, there were spirits designing the destiny of the earth. Now, Listen, I woke up this morning and God began to say strange things about Hebrews chapter 1. Let me just read it. It says, God, who at sundry times, different times, in diverse manners, spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets. Note, has in these last days spoken unto us by who? His son. Let me tell you, the defining spirit, the spirit that will define the times and the seasons of the last days will be the son of God, Jesus Christ. No, I am not saying it, in case you have not seen it before, I woke up to a reality that made me almost jump out of my skin. Anything that is happening now is about Jesus. It's about the Messiah. 
It's about his coming, his second coming. <coughs> I want to repeat everything that is happening now. The last days is supposed to be about the Messiah. I want to repeat the last days about the Son. Look at this. It says that in these last days, He has spoken to us. Through his son, by his son. That means every event that happens is talking about who? Jesus. Every event is pointing to Jesus. There's an earthquake, it's pointing to Jesus. Anything that happens in Israel from now is pointing to Jesus. Whatever happens in Nigeria is pointing to Jesus. No, you may not believe me. I may be going mad. I would rather dwell in that realm. But unto this was I born. For this purpose have I been living. I've been waiting for these days to define Christ in the midst of the earth. To find him. To show people him and show them the way. And I sense that the scripts have been opened. The seals have been broken. And our eyes are also being opened. Look at what that scripture says. Before, before, God spoke through other men, prophets, angels. But now everything that will be unveiling itself will be around prophecy, the Messiah, will be unveiling the Messiah. So is God trying to show you the Messiah and are you refusing to see? I want to ask you the question. Can you sober down and start finding, looking for the Messiah and looking for your role in this present revelation of the Messiah? I'm coming to that at the end of this in a few more minutes as I begin to conclude. But I'm coming to that in a moment. And ought you not to begin to look for your role? What is my place in the present circumstance? Why was I born? Am I just here today for a prayer meeting? Am I just here to pray for the nations of the earth? Am I just here to pray for Nigeria? Why, why am I just here to seek for promotion and protection? Father, unveil the reason for my being alive now, for my, and help me fulfill it. If it is governance, put me on my seat or put me in my seat in government. Let me manifest what I was meant to manifest. I repeat, if it is government, put me in my seat in government. Let me manifest. If it is in the area of sports, Lord, break the ground for me. Put me in my seat in that area. Let me redefine the future, the future, the future of the present generation and of youths. Lord, is it in the, on, the, on the pulpit? Father, put your word in my mouth. That by me, everyone I come across will receive life, might have life. But let my role be defined. Every event happening, my beloved, whether I am making a noise anyhow or not, listening is referring to the Messiah. He's saying something about the Messiah. He's pointing at the Messiah. Are you hearing or you are still deaf? Or you are still distracted. Or you are still occupied with your civil rights. Instead of trying to understand what is the father telling me to do. Where is he taking me to? How am I supposed to be, because I've been granted contrary to nature. How am I supposed to be walking against the wind to establish the eternal? Many of you may need to walk against the tide in order to carry the world and point the world at what it is supposed to be looking at because the world is looking at the wrong direction. Looking unto Jesus, the Bible says, the author and the finisher of your faith, the beginning and the end, the author and the finisher, when the author of the world and the finisher of the world, looking unto Jesus, we need to begin to teach men how men ought to live in this season. How they need to comport themselves. What they need to say. What they need to do. How might they find fulfillment? 
anything that God prospers you by or helps you to prosper by is meant to make life easier for another man. You need to become your brother's keeper. What are you doing to make life easier for your neighbor? You need to find out what is your purpose. But this is going to be a busy time for many of us, especially those of us who have purpose. It's going to be, look at what the Bible says. Had in these last days, that is the emphasis now, spoken to us. The last days, the Lord will be speaking in the last days through his son. So events will be speaking about his son. We'll be passing messages. So anything, events that happen now, will be carrying hidden messages of the son of God. Hidden messages. Are you really, really, really reading the signs? The Bible says, whom he had appointed here of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. He appointed here. Here. He is the beginning and the end. Here of all things. I see Jesus riding in every wind now, every situation, every circumstance. I see the imprint of his finger. The Bible says in verse 3, who being in the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power. That means from now henceforth, nothing can be controlled except by the word of his power. So where is the word of his power in your mouth? That is why God said we need to equip ourselves again, restore the word back in our mouth, rehearse everything again that the Lord had taught us. Get back our visions. Make it clear. Because everything from now will be upheld by the word of his power. By the word of his power. By the word of his power. Raboch teke ye kalima handa raba handa. Ye kakaraba. I say yes, 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 Lord. I receive that word, the quantum word in my mouth. I receive the grace of his power for this season. And by the word of his power, I control the situation in Israel. By the word of his power, I control the situation in Nigeria, in my own house, in my own family. By the word of his power, in my mouth, I take charge over my life and the destiny of all those around me. By the word of his power. By the word. Of his power. By the word of his power. My beloved, the king is already manifesting, except that we are not reading him. And that's my worry. We are not reading him. We are not getting the message. We are not, we are not reading him. The Bible says, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. God is rising in the present winds. And it is the word of his power that controls it. Restore the efficacy of the word <coughs> in your mouth. I want us to look at second sorry First Peter 1 verse 5. There were some things I was going to say, but I'll leave that for a next broadcast. Listen. One of the things I wrote down here is that understand the song and his ways, and you will be able to control and rule what is happening now. I want to repeat, understand the Son of God, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, and his ways. And you will be able to control and rule over what is happening now.
your present circumstances. But as long as you don't understand him and his ways, like the Bible says, see how he scatters his fire in the clouds. By taking his hands and taking fire in his hands and commanding them to go after his enemies. See how he scatters his lightnings across the skies. You need to find the ways by which God is doing things now. If you can understand the ways by which he is doing things, listen, you will be able to control and rule over what is happening now. But if you cannot, you will not. Very important point. Be able to do that. There is an aspect in my notes I'm going to leave out. Different kind of demons that are operating. Some of which are scoffers. You know, people who are mocking the gospel, many of them are demons in disguise, or many of them are being influenced by spirits. You see them mocking and mocking, even they don't know why. They look foolish as they mock. But they mock all the same, and you are ashamed of being a Christian. It's a demon making you to be ashamed. They are called scoffers in the Bible. And you will see them in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 3. They are called scoffers. In the last days, scoffers, they are spirits that are called scoffers. They will rise up. They will rise up. But have you not read in that same Hebrews chapter 1, if you keep on reading, that all of these angels, they are wings sent to serve us. They are, they are not meant to rule over us. We are supposed to rule over them. Scoffers. There are spirits that will be called scoffers. They are mockers. Even they don't know why they are mocking you. And somehow, because there is a spirit behind them, you start feeling ashamed of being a Christian. All those demons. Then there are the real demons, fallen demons, who are disguising as angels of light. Wolves in sheep's clothing. The Bible calls them wolves. But they look born again, they speak light. They are teachers of the world. You need to watch out for them. You need to watch out for them. Then there are deceitful teachers. I'm talking about the different spirits of Britain. Lying tongues who lie under the mouth of men. They say the things people want to hear. People rejoice at that. Because that is what they want to hear. They are called deceitful teachers. First uh, Timothy 4 verse 1. And 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 1. First Timothy 4 1. But God is saying all the spirits that will be speaking, they will be controlled and defined by the Son of God. So it means that no demon that comes after you has power to touch you. Why? Because he's been defined by who? The Son of God. There is a song that, said, that, 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 that keeps coming to my mind. The Son of God is lifted high. 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 Listen, because this is very important. When he is lifted high, he will draw all men to himself. Listen to me. All of these coffers, God will release them to speak so that prophecy can be fulfilled. So that that army that will come against Christ can be gathered. Without them, the army cannot be gathered. I want to repeat, if these coffers are not there, they, will, they themselves will raise an army. All these things that are mentioned in 1 Timothy 4.1, in 2 Peter 3 3, in 2 Timothy 3 1, their intention is to do what? Raise their Magadon army. 
an army of antichrist. If they don't exist, some of you wonder, you think it is to tempt you. No, they were not meant to tempt you. Mm -mm. They are a walking of the Son of God in the last days to allow Satan to raise an army. It is by those spirits that Satan, that will, that Satan will raise an army of, worker, of mockers, an army that will hate Christ, that will be violent against God. And that is why some of these evil scoffers will come from within the church. Some of those deceitful teachers will come from the church so that people will hate the church more by their mistakes. But let me tell you, don't be deceived. All those armies are being controlled by the same, the spirit of the Son of God, the spirit of prophecy. The Bible calls it in the last days. That is why you see one common thing tying all of them in all of those scriptures in the last days. In the last days, you keep look. I don't have the time to read, but can you go through them? You find that everywhere it is written in the last days. The common string tying all these scriptures I've spoken is in the last days. In the last days, and Hebrew chapter one is the central point because the spirit of the last days is the son of God so the son of God will allow this cold full spirit to begin to mock so that an army can be born against the Christ so that the Christ can wipe out the name of Bali from her mouth the names of Balim from her mouth wipe out Satan once and for all and fulfill Hosea chapter 2 verse 17 when God said he will wipe out all the names of Balim. He will gather them to the battle of Armageddon. He will gather them into that valley of Ahitohel and pass judgment on them. But they must first become an army. Only scoffers can raise that kind of army. So, please, when you hear them, stop trying to be spiritually, what, what do I call it, socially correct. Stop trying to play to the gallery. You will be falling into the hands of this army. For most of them are already in the church. And they are luring you out. To manifest an antichrist spirit without you knowing you are manifesting an antichrist spirit. So you need to search, I mean, purge yourself. You need to restrain yourself. You need to judge yourself. You need to be circumspect in these days, in every action that you make. Could an angel of light or a demon pretending to be an angel of light trying to make you walk against Christ without you knowing? I say this thing because the day of war is come. We are entering into the season when men think they are doing God's service. But actually they are destroying the kingdom. They are laying foundations for the Antichrist, including Christian rulers. When these realities kept forming in my spirit, fear caught me. Fear caught me. And I saw the Lord link it to all of this scripture in 1 Timothy 4 1, 2 Peter 3 3, 2 Timothy 3 1. I saw the Lord link them together. All of them were working together. Some outrightly against Christ, some in the name of Christ, but they are deceitful spirits. There is a crowd effect going on now. Be careful. Before you lose your soul and you lose the meaning of your life. Now, I want to bring two last scriptures. Number one is an oath. John chapter 6, verse 39. The book of John. Chapter 6, verse 
Sorry, I hope I'm reading the right scripture. Yes, John chapter 6. Listen. I want you to hear these words. And this is the Father's, and this is the Father's will which had sent me. This is Jesus talking now. That of all which he had given me, I should lose nothing. There is one promise that everyone God has handed over to the Father, I mean to Jesus Christ, He's not going to lose any in these last days. God is not going to lose you. Therefore, anything that is overwhelming you now, I release the fire of God to burn up the hands of that person or that thing or that circumstance. I repeat, I want to repeat that. Jesus is saying, all which the Father has given me, I swear to you, I'm not going to lose any. So in spite of these cultures, I mean these coffers, all these deceitful people, strange doctrines, those of you who are truly God's own, there is an oath over your life that God says he will never lose any of you. So if you are under any affliction of these demonic spirits I just mentioned, either by the power of their tongue, Today, I break that curse in your body. I command you to lose it, and I command you to receive your healing now in Jesus' name. And look, I'm not just preaching. I'm sending the word into your body to do a warfare now. Come out from their grief. Come out from their sickness. Behold, rise up and walk. Be healed. Because your father says he cannot lose anyone that is put in his hands. No, look at that scripture. I want to repeat it. He said, but you raise it up again at the last day. Let me read it from the Bullman version. This is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose none of those he has given me, but should raise them up on the last day. My father, you said you won't lose me. Today, in the name of Jesus, no enchantment against me shall prosper. So let them dissolve. Let them be broken. I am free because my father says so. That is for the first concluding part. Then the last concluding part, because I want you to note those words. Because this first one is that Christ has a covenant with the church not to lose any of us. Christ has a covenant with the church not to lose any. So remind God, take this word before the Lord and remind him. Then the second one is found in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 5. And that one you will ask God to reveal that salvation for which you are being protected to manifest in the last days. Let me read it, then you will understand it. First Peter 1 5. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It says, You are being protected, Holman Bashan now. You are being protected by God's power through faith. For a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. I like the way that Holman Basham puts it. He says, you have been protected by God's power through faith. For a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. So, can you tell God, Father, can you unveil your reason for protecting me? And help me fulfill that purpose. I want to repeat. Unveil your reason for protecting me. And make me fulfill that purpose. 
Because I am still useless if I die without fulfilling the purpose for which you protected me. So every protection God has brought into our lives is to enable us to fulfill something. He's protecting you to fulfill something. So you are useless if you are not fulfilling that thing. Now, these are the things God kept grappling with my spirit throughout the last week. What am I being shielded for? What am I being protected for? Am I fulfilling the purpose for that thing? Or I'm just enjoying the belly of the Lord like that embryo, that baby in the womb of the mother. She enjoys the womb, the warmth of the womb. That the baby is not ready to come out. The baby just wants to remain there. Because it's getting free food. Free want. Nice cushion. Why will the baby want to come out? Is that what you are doing? Enjoying the grace of God. The protection of God. Don't you know that protection is to fulfill it, the, the purpose? Can you tell the Lord to put into your hands the purpose for protecting you so you can fulfill it? Father, put it in my place. Put me in the place where I can fulfill your reason for protecting me. So that I can fulfill destiny. God is protecting you to fulfill a particular thing. Can you please ask him to put you in that place where you will fulfill it? There must be a place he's taking you to. That is why he's protecting you. Every one of you must find yourselves in the places of your purpose. So, so that you can fulfill your reason for being alive. I want to. I want to. I don't want to be a spoiled child, just protected. Find that place. You know, verse 6 says, you rejoice in this. Though now for a short time you have had a struggle in various trials, or you have had to struggle in various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, more valuable than gold, which perishes, though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. You need to ask Christ to re reveal your purpose for being protected. So that you can fulfill that purpose. I repeat, reveal the purpose for being protected so that I can fulfill that purpose. We were not born, not here on earth, just to have to heaven. No, we were born on earth, here on earth, to dress something, to fulfill something. To carry out a work. Even Jesus was sent to carry out a work. That is why you are protected. Find that work and fulfill it. Find that work. Put your hand on your chest and say, My Heavenly Father, unlock me now. Unveil me. Let me walk in your protection according to your word, fulfilling your purpose from now henceforth. Every step I take be a fulfillment of purpose. We are going to take the blood of Jesus together today. It's going to be served to every one of us. But can you go on your knees in this moment? And tell the Lord, empty me and fill me with the brand new man, as a brand new man. Show me the reason for your salvation. 
And today as I drink your blood, let the new me walk the earth in fulfilling purpose. Let me not walk anywhere. I covenant my every walk, my every day to fulfill a purpose. I drink this blood to covenant my life in your hands, to sell my life to you. That today, I might fulfill purpose by my life. I repent for my sins. Forgive me. While you are on your knees, if you feel like standing up from where you are kneeling, I'm going to the front to kneel down to repent for sins of failing the Lord in various parts. Leave that chair, go and kneel down right in front, either by your television or by the altar that is in front of you in place you are in a group meeting. And ask the Lord to have mercy and restore back your purpose, to take back what is lost. Stretch out your hand to him and say, Lord, I am here. Gather back my life again. Restore back what is lost. Restore back my life. Have mercy on me. Forgive me my sins. Purge me in the blood. Give me a new spirit. Give me a new name. Give me a new spirit. Give me a new name. I rebuke the thrones that war against me. I rebuke my own iniquities, my own infirmity. I rebuke, oh God, in brokenness, I pray. Reset my life for me. And restore back the spirit of my salvation. Restore back also the spirit of my purpose. Thank you for hearing me. If you will do this, please go straight to the altar. If there are ushers there, let them coordinate. While they are kneeling down, distribute the communion. When you finish praying, everybody must ask the Lord to make them a brand new man. Make me a brand new man. Let me rise as a brand man. I dream to enter into the realm of miracles. I receive authority. I receive power. I dream to live with God. Just the blood today, not plus the flesh, just the blood of Jesus. Just pray for yourself. And as you finish, take an offering to the Lord and just bless the Lord and worship the Lord and you may close this meeting. You just take an offering to the Lord, just bless the Lord and you may close the meeting. But today I release the fire of God upon your life in this moment. And I command a gift of salvation into your life. That today, that the reason for your salvation may be made manifest. That today, the month of signs and wonders might unveil you. That today, that spirit that defines the time will help you find your place in time. Even Jesus the Messiah. The Son of God, whom every circumstance and situation is talking about now, whether good or evil. Today, may that understanding come upon you, that every situation around you is pointing to the Messiah, and that you need to know the Messiah to be able to control those situations. If you don't know the Messiah, you cannot control your situation. So today, today, know the Messiah, whether you are born again or not. Jesus, I want to know you. You must know this Messiah. You must seek to know the Messiah. I repeat, you must seek to know. Search for him. Find him. Like I did as a young man. In the 70s. 1975. 76. I searched for him as I have never searched for him for two, three years. Trying to understand him, understand his ways, know him. Until I knew I had connected with his person. 
find him and your life will never be the same again. But I thank you for the revelation of this season. Today, I prophesy, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you begin to unveil the season, remove the veil of the season, and break every hidden demon that is hidden in the season, and every spirit of torment, every demon that is disguised in the congregation of the righteous and outside the congregation of the righteous, in governments, in our nations, every demon that is disguised, unveil them. Father, I rebuke their torment in the earth, and I command, O oh God, by your Holy Spirit, and by that great angel Michael, whom you have released to help your sins in this season, let their yoke be broken. Let their yoke be broken. Let them not prosper against the righteous. I release each man that is under bondage, tormented by these coffers and by these demons. I break that yoke, that alignment against you, that conglomerate, confederacy, uh, that, that, that agreement, those people who have ganged up, that gang up against you, and just I destroy the them one by one. Worship the Lord. Within these three weeks, find yourself in a new place. I command that. Be removed into a new place. I release the hand of God to move you now. Today, I release the fire of God. Receive mercy in this moment. Receive your promotion. And I command them to receive your movement. I thank you, Father, for hearing us. Take on the glory that today, in Jesus, that the reason for your salvation may be made manifest. Amen. I want you to list it wherever you are on your knees. There is a very important matter here. God has protected you do all through your life for a purpose, for a salvation, for a work that you must fulfill in your lifetime. Not just to fill your father's house eating food or waiting for an inheritance. Every man has a mission. Some of you are consultants in the hospitals. God made you consultant for a particular purpose. It's not just to become a leader. Some of you are military generals. Tonight here, when I retired or something, God made you a general for a particular thing. They must not retire you without that particular thing being fulfilled. You may be a permanent secretary or a director general. Or you may be an estate developer. There must be something in it. First Peter 5 is the key. First Peter 1 verse 5. You were saved in order to fulfill a particular salvation. Can you put that on the screen, please? First Peter 1 verse 5. That was the last emphasis. Please be very fast when I command a thing. Those of you controlling the screen. Listen. Can you say, Heavenly Father, unlock out of my promotion, my fulfillment of prophecy, the particular thing I'm supposed to achieve from the place of this, my promotion, let me find it. Let me achieve it. Did you hear that? God is not just protecting you for protection's sake. No, 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 no. God has not made you a head of family for being head of family. You are being protected by God's power through faith for a salvation that you are going to bring to other people, you are going to carry out. For a salvation that is ready to be revealed through you. A mission you are supposed to fulfill. I decree that you will not be aborted until the mission for which you are supposed to be fulfilled is fulfilled. Dr. Fidelis, you heard what I said. Nobody, nobody is going to abort any of you until the mission for which God has wasted all his time, all these years, 
release the power of the blood of Jesus to promote you, protect you, deal with other people, then at this time when you should be fulfilling the purpose, somebody is trying to deal with you. Today, I cancel that person in Jesus' name. Can you tell God, arise now. Redeem the purpose for which you have protected me all this while. Reveal it. Unveil it. As you distribute inheritance. Now. You remember one of the things that was spoken here? That in these two months, inheritances have been distributed. That they have crossed through into Canaan land. This was the time when they came out and the angel came out. The captain of the host with a sword. To help them take the land that was to be their possession. Today, the one that your strength cannot conquer. Let an invisible hand conquer for you. I didn't hear somebody say amen. As you eat of this communion. Let the power of inheritance rest upon you. That means this communion is supposed to make you become the purpose for which you have been preserved. The purpose for which God gave you a second life. Some of you almost died a few years ago from one sickness and God saved you from accidents and God saved you. God did not save you so that you can share testimony. No, he saved you so that because there is something you must achieve that Satan cannot steal from you. Today, as you eat this communion, let that thing be activated in your life. So, the communion is a covenant between you and God. Can you tell the Lord, Tear the veil around me. Open up everything. Every obstruction. And release the seed of my purpose. To find me. In these two months. In this year. 2023. This year of the Messiah. The reason for which you have been protecting me. Let it be made manifest. Can you open your mouth and say that? Tell the Lord that. As you hold that flesh. And like we said, if there are things that have been your own making, that is your own obstruction, you know them yourself. Either habits or anything. You know, just you are a perpetually, you never fulfill your promises to God. You make it, you don't fulfill it. Then you need to come to the altar by yourself and say, God, I have come to make a rearrangement. Please forgive me. You need to come and settle that. But this month and this year, a few of those scriptures that were quoted there, an army is being born by scoffers, by people who mock, so that they can fight, they can multiply and fight the kingdom. And the Son of God is aware of that. He's aware of that. But he has made a vow that every one of you the father has given him is not going to lose anyone then he has made the second vow each one the father has given him must fulfill the purpose for which they are defended ah you will not be a casualty go back listen to this tape it's going to be on the air for a while listen to it write your notes let it make sense make your prayer items Revisit it. They are deep. That was why I recorded it. Because if I was to preach it, I would be too conscious of time that I will cut off some things and finish. But here, I am forced to allow it go through. So that you know where the army that is coming against us. And But that power is not given unto them. God swore, everyone you have given me, I'm not going to lose any. It shall not be spoken. If before for every mistake, Satan smote you, this time, when they raise their hand, they will become leprous. I say, anyone whose hands is risen against you, let let prophecy, let prophecy, let prophet, let prophet, let prophecy follow them everywhere. Let prophet, let prophecy follow them. Somebody shout leprosy. 
leprosy. Leprosy. Leprosy. Anyone that has connected to your soul to eat up your life, let those words from your mouth eat him up. So, 1 Peter 1 5 is key. Lord, that which for which you have suffered to preserve me. How can God keep you for 40 years, for 30 years, for 20 years? He didn't allow you to die. Then 35 years they want to kill you. Who is killing you? 45 years they want to kill you. Who is killing you? In your 50th year, 50th year, they want to kill you. Who are you running away from? Are they power more powerful than the man who has preserved you for 50 years? Uh, every pre-timely day, I cancel today. In the name of Jesus Christ. The father vowed in the last days that he would not lose anyone pretamely until they have fulfilled 1 Peter 1, 5. The purpose for which they have been preserved all these years. All these years. Jesus said, whatsoever the father has spoken concerning me must come to pass. Shall be fulfilled. Not one word can fail. Not one word will fail in your life. I want you to stand up on your feet somewhere. Can you begin to ask the Lord, break the veil, break the veil, break the veil, break the veil. Today, break the veil. Everything that is a misunderstanding, cancel it. Spiritual misunderstanding, physical misunderstanding, everything that is a misrepresentation, cancel it by the blood of the Lamb. Anything that is a mistake already happening around my life, I cancel it. Anything that is a mistake that is already happened, I cancel it. By the blood of the Lamb, I place a demand on your resurrection. I place a demand on the cross. I place a demand to break me loose and fix me in the purpose, in the place. Baba, today, let purpose be attached to ministry. Let me start fulfilling the reason for which you have preserved me. Baba, why am I healthy? Why are my bones strong? Why is there strength in my... Why am I still intelligent? Where is the work I'm supposed to do with this brain? Oh yeah, Baba, attach the work. That is what First Peter 1 5 says. That the reason why he has protected you is because there is a salvation. There is something you are supposed to salvage. Something you are supposed to do, accomplish. Tell you to unlock the door of that thing. You were meant to be a savior too. I am meant to be. What is that thing in Nigeria I'm supposed to save? I refuse to die. I will save that thing. What is that thing in my father's house? What is that thing in my church? No. In my community? No. In my state? No. Can you begin to command that they unlock? And you say, Lord, by the blood of Jesus, I unlock myself now. I repent for every iniquity. Anything I didn't fulfill, I ought to have fulfilled. Forgive me. Unlock me. Release your fire. Unlock me. Unlock me. Somebody shout, unlock me. take a bite of that flesh and as you eat just a bite I didn't say eat all a bite start telling the Lord unlock me unlock me unlock me if it is witchcraft unlock me circumstances and situations unlock me time and chance the Bible says time and chance happen to them all unlock me 
Start quoting those aspects of scripture that affects your destiny. Oh, the hand of a man. Unlock me from the hand of a man. Strange landmarks. Unlock me from strange landmarks. Strange words. Unlock me from the words of people that have held me captive. I'm listing the things that can hold you captive. Strange food. Strange water. Strange anointing. Unlock me as I eat. Dissolve them out of my body. Release me. Sickness, disease, oh yeah, unlock me. Get out. My time has come. Sanity and sanctity in my brain. Sanity in my mind, in my soul. Intelligence, wisdom. Oh yeah, unlock, unlock, release me. Every prison house around me, oh yeah, unlock me. Family, unlock me. Bloodline, unlock me. Check and Toreba. Speak in tongues. Speak with your understanding. My father, if my words are not enough, let my tongue speak for me. Rabo Seketi Yakalaba Hanta. Mandolo Seketa. Unlock me. Put me at the step of my destiny now. second bite take away my mistakes and correct my ways i plead with you anything that is fighting against me from within me my character my own character my own character take it away but unlock me the essence is unlock me and put me in my place unlock me the spirit of adoption i want you to begin to adopt me carry me from the ground carry me from the spirit realm i don't care my achievements own me now take me over but remove me from circulation and from now every day of my life plant me where i ought to be prayer is not a difficult prayer take me out from general circulation every day now pin the day for me plant me where I ought to be if the son is in charge of the last days tell him that look it's an argument now tell him if the son is in charge of every circumstance then by this blood, by his sacrifice, adopt my soul from circulation and plant me only in his circumstances, both secular and spiritual, where I fulfill prophecy. Let nothing be a mistake. Let every enchantment be cut off. Every invocation be cut off. Every witchcraft be cut off. I invoke liberty now. Freedom now. Freedom now. I confess my release by the blood of Jesus Christ. In the name 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 of Jesus Christ. Adopt me from the physical. Blotting out every handwriting. Of nature. Of spirit. And of sin. 
in the name of Jesus and plant me into the word of the Lord upholding me by the word of his power in the name of Jesus restoring power back in my mouth power in my body power in my flesh power in my life I receive the adoption of the spirit in Jesus name can you take a first sip thank you father let your name be glory you are the let your name be glorified. We give you glory, Jesus, and on, on. You are the Lord. Let your by now you have it finished eating the flesh if you have not you better finish your flesh we are now in the blood realm <laughs> I don't know whether that screen is working now I don't know can you guys always be ready for this meeting I mean it's an attack Always pray over your instruments, anoint them before the service. But it's important that we get this thing completely. And if there are screens are still not working, then please open to Judges 11, 24 to 27. In case their screens are not getting it. Judges chapter 11 from verse 24 and I'm going to read to 27 because that's what you're about to do now. <laughs> I say I give you glory. When you drink the blood that is what finalizes. You are the Lord let your name be Tonight, let the troops that have filled the earth, the angels that have taken over, I enter into a covenant and a vow with them over your life. That anything that is beyond your strength, let their strength take care of it. I say, You are the Lord. Let your name be glorified. You are the Lord. You are the Lord. Let your name be glorified. Oh, I give you glory. strong battles I would rather want to read this particular one from the King James Version <laughs> Jehoshaphat knew he was helpless he was son of nobody he was actually a bastard child a cast away spiritually he had no power physically he had no power he had no covenant with any demon it's just that God sent the elders to go and carry him to come and represent God. So he knew he didn't have power. Today, right now, it's only the blood of Jesus that is standing between you and your destiny. Did you hear what I just said? 
<laughs> so you know what he told them? He said, I have no problem against your God, so I'm not even casting them out. He said, will thou, will not thou possess that which Chemosh, Chemosh is that God that by the blood of the sacrifice of children gives power. Is by blood it gives life. Will thou, will not thou possess that which Chemosh thy God giveth thee to possess? So, whomsoever the Lord our God shall drive out from before us, them we will. Are you ready for that? Eh? If your God give you this, possess it. But from today, this army where I don't see. Whatsoever they drive away from me, mountain they create, I will possess. Are you ready to enter into that covenant with God? That, look, that is the season we are entering into. Eh? Their God will challenge the grounds in the earth. But because God is coming to clear the way for the Messiah to start raising up his institutions, he will break and fix you before they know you have been fixed. They will think it was a, they won't even remember that it was a mistake until you have started acting. He said, ah, no, that was not the name I gave you. I gave you somebody else. Why did you put this man? He said, well, I've already announced it. We cannot change it. That which their God gives them, let them possess. But the one our God, Baba, can you go on your knees? Can you tell the Lord, I enter into your oath. The same spirit that came to the aid of Jephthah, let him enter into the life of the remaining part of this year. On my behalf. And like you did to Jephthah in verse 24. We told us during this teaching. That we have entered into a time when God is distributing inheritance. That which you give us we will possess. And any demon that tries to take it. Let that demon die. Do you agree with that? Yes. Can you shout amen? amen? Every promotion you have vowed to me and given to me in this year, I will take it over. Any demon who tries to, the spirit of Chemosh, blood spirit, the spirit of Dagon, the spirit of the queen of heaven, the spirit of Ascharoth. I'm not entering into Ascharoth again. Lord, any spirit by whatever name that stands in the way, kill it for me. Amen. Cut it off for me. Uh, of course, officially, people say demons don't die because they have been appointed, that there is a doctrinal problem. Uh, I don't care about your possessions to me. And let every spirit that contains those possessions let them vanish as it was with Chemosh and Jephthah and Israel. So let it be with me in the name of Jesus Christ. I didn't hear somebody say, Amen. Amen. Let this blood adopt me now for this specific sign and wonder. I receive it with thanksgiving. In Jesus' name. You may drink of the blood. Can you begin to receive the gift of life and the germination of everything that is a blessing in your life? Let my vineyard begin to germinate all around me. Begin to call it forth. I receive the germination of my vineyard, my purpose, 
my plantations, my promotions, my thrones, my ascendancies, my generational blessing. I receive the garden of life now. Can you begin to receive the garden of life to germinate everywhere you enter? My garden, my garden, my garden, my garden. Begin to call it forth, my garden. Come forth. I receive you by the covenant of this blood. I receive you by this testament. I receive. I receive. I receive you. I receive you. I receive you. I receive you. I want you to stand up on your feet. You will put your hand in your pocket. Whatever the Lord has put in your mouth or in your heart as a seed to seal this. The next thing Jephthah did was a sacrifice. But in his own sacrifice, he did a foolish sacrifice. He said, God, whatever comes to me first after you have given that victory, I sacrifice to you. And it was his child that came. That was foolish. Put your hand in your pocket and take a sacrifice or let your heart put a sacrifice in your mouth that you are going to bring, you are giving to the Lord now or after this service. You will take that sacrifice and you will come and drop it before the Lord right here, right now. And then we will pray the last prayer. By this sacrifice, I seal this covenant. Drop it, drop it down there. Drop it. You have a law. Let your name be glorified. You are the Lord. You are, you are the Lord. Oh God, 
want you to take that scripture and just look at Judges 11.27. That's the second verse there we are going to read. My father, we have no one else in the heavens and we have no other witnesses outside of you. Your word is all that we have. Your word is all that we live by. Your word is all that your church exists by. Therefore, today, I want you to read this scripture loud and clear. By the virtue of the blood, that which you have done today, and the justification of the Spirit, I declare that at the sound of your words, anything that worried against you shall die. Yeah. They shall disappear. That is what I mean. I say they shall disappear. Yeah. A war will begin against them instantly and now. Yeah. How many of you can shout amen to that? Can you read that scripture with me? I read it loud. Wherefore I have not sinned against thee, but thou doest me wrong to war against me. The law, the judge, be judged this day between the children of Israel and the children, and let the people say amen to that. Can you read that again? Because you are now calling upon the Lord to stand in between, to be judged. Between you and these people that you have not troubled, who are troubling you, whether in the office, whether in the marketplace, whether even in church, self, they are troubling you, or in your office, or on the streets, the Lord, they will always see a judge stand between you and them. That was the conclusion of this prayer. Those were the final words that nailed this miracle. Can we all read it again? Wherefore I have not sinned against thee, but thou doest me wrong to war against me. The law, the judge, be judge this day between the children of Israel done them any wrong. You need an emergency miracle to break loose something that you are in trouble concerning and until that thing happens quickly, you may get messed up terribly. I want you to just come here and kneel down there and imagine, God just dropped that in my spirit. There are, there are some people that just need an immediate miracle that breaks open something. I'm not talking about any kind of miracle. An immediate miracle just come just come just come ah my father my father my father my father my father Behold the chariots of Israel and the fire thereof. Today, in the name of Jesus, I unleash the mantle of the prophet Elijah that was unleashed by fire from the heavens upon the lives of each one of these to burn away the emergencies that is affecting their lives. That right now let the yoke and the veil be taken away and broken now that the torment be destroyed in the name of Jesus I command your miracle to take place immediately 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 
immediately immediately in the name of Jesus therefore by the hand of the Lord the hand of affliction is lifted away from you for every one of you an escape has opened receive your visitation in the name of Jesus therefore from now henceforth your vineyards shall be full let harvest come into your hands now harvest in the name of Jesus can you stretch out those two hands up can you say oh yeah harvest I receive you now welcome to my life harvest in the name of Jesus Harvest in the name of Jesus. Harvest in the name of Jesus. Everybody begin to speak in tongues for a moment. Manana <laughs> Randia kabala dosa, sandia na randia kaya daya. Lina ni na dosi e bradi shaladia. Oh my e kasi e adadada. Idia ni zadi belosi, shika po pa i kana kanu zadia. have is receiving somebody that had I see the ground being pegged and I see a position being placed 
so that there can be fulfillment of prophecy. Somebody, there is a discovery. You are being discovered. Somebody, I see a package being handed over to you. Somebody, I see God appointing a portion to you. up on your feet and just lift those hands up and just bless the Father as we take that song three more times just that chorus we see this living sacrifice I am your worship I say living sacrifice I am your worship receive receive this living sacrifice I am your worship I am your worship I serve I serve this living sacrifice each of you that is standing here a new thing has been written for you a new thing has been written can you just go ahead just go ahead give God a big praise and clap and just bless the name of the Lord wow wow how many of you can feel the presence of the Lord here. Listen. Step into your new field. For the old field is taken away from you. And please, as the harvest opens everywhere, come and build those four corners. We want to build there and raise a tent up so that we can start the citywide prayer watch. And then we'll start doing a very serious facing Jerusalem. The, the tower, that tent is supposed to face Jerusalem. It's already been figured like that, even by the town planners. Let's set it up like that towards Jerusalem. Let's call the nation to pray towards Jerusalem. So whatever the Lord commands you, just let them know it is a tower towards Jerusalem. There is already an account for that. And just do that. And please, join them in their weekly covenant prayers here. Those of you who are in Abuja, there are those of you who come from neighboring states. You don't miss this meeting. But those of you in Abuja, no matter how far you are, join them. Join them. How many of you can feel the new glory that is upon you? You won't understand what has happened tonight. But enter into your harvest and enjoy God's goodness. For the days of your glory are upon you. <laughs> Don't be afraid of the wild winds you heard about them today. Your own wind has been released also. 
Can you just bless the Lord and give him glory? Just give him glory. Oh, my soul. You may go back to Oh, my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul. Worship your holy name. The sun comes up, say. The sun comes up. He's a new day dawning. It's time to sing. The song again, whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Let the Lord bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His soul in Ship. 